My name is Alicia Stella and with me as always is my co-host Ian. Hey kids. And we're coming to you live, previously recorded, to bring you the first annual Park Stop Stop Hate fundraiser. We're raising money for the Trevor Project to help protect LGBTQ youth. We'll be collecting donations all throughout the weekend, but during today's presentation, we wanted to bring you positive stories about how the theme parks have made our lives and the lives of our friends better. While they last, we also have limited edition art prints for sale now, theme park memorabilia auctions, and everyone who donates $10 or more will automatically be entered into our raffles. Check your email today and tomorrow to see if you won. If you're here for the live premiere of this presentation, be sure to chat along with us in the live chat. And if you're watching this later, leave a comment and tell us what you love about theme parks. Now, check out the link in the description to make a donation, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. Thanks for your support. Are we done? Can we stop? Yes, please. Is enough? Beer? I'm going this way. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good thing. From those first moments to your most recent visit and everything in between, theme parks foster an environment where lifelong memories are made. They're a place where people can come together and escape the worries of everyday life. You may not know the name of the person sitting next to you on a roller coaster, or it could be a family member who you deeply love. But either way, that ride, those next few minutes, can be so impactful that they could stay with you for the rest of your life. We can go on a ride today or tomorrow or the next day and they'll all be different and memorable in their own way. While it's the same loops and animatronics every time, once you pull down that lap bar and your hands go up just like the stranger or loved one by your side, you're creating memories. Memories with people who, no matter how different they may seem, are enjoying the moment just as much as you. We all have that in common. Memories that no one can take away from you and will always be there for you. Hey, remember that time when we... Or how about that time we went on? We all have those times like that to think back on. For me, that moment was when my grandma pushed me around in a stroller at Bush Gardens looking at all the animals. She loved elephants. It was riding my first upside down coaster with my mom, gripping the handlebar but knowing she wouldn't let me fall out. It was finally being tall enough to ride a scary coaster with my dad and older brothers. It was going to Universal with my love and being there for her first visit, and second, and third, and so on. All I know is that the next time won't be the last. These are just my experiences, but in a way, we all share them. You have your own versions that you hold near and dear to your heart. It's something we all have in common, but makes us unique at the same time. My memories live here, in theme parks, with other people, together. Our stories are written here. Their experience is not found on any map. It's taking part in something special, together. I love Walt Disney World. The parks make for a fun time, and yeah, you could argue that more than anything else, they're just entertainment. But when you're younger and more impressionable, they can be so much more than that. Growing up, my family would vacation at Disney World every few years. And when I think back on those times, the part that really sticks out to me is the sense of wonder that I'd feel on anything with a futuristic flair to it. Of course, that meant Horizons, because, you know, it's Horizons but it also included everything from the post-show of Space Mountain, to Body Wars, to even that weird CG ending of Delta's Dream Flight, where we all lived in a future that looked like a 1990s school folder version of Blade Runner. Those rides at Disney fostered this love of technology and science fiction, which, as I got older, drove me to films like Star Wars and shows like Star Trek. And in turn, those drove me to film school, which taught me how to produce videos, which eventually led to a YouTube channel that, for about five years, very literally changed my life. And of course, it's no surprise that channel was about Disney World itself. So in a strange looping butterfly effect sort of way, the Disney parks have had a massive influence on me. What's even more amazing is seeing some of that futurism come to fruition over the years. Spaceship Earth told me that one day I'd be able to video chat with other people halfway around the world. Little did Spaceship Earth know that we would be doing a whole lot of that these past few years. The Carousel of Progress told me that in the future, I'd be playing virtual reality video games from home and using my voice to control parts of my house. And I do. And it's awesome. And I haven't burnt a single turkey, probably because I don't randomly repeat numbers that I hear out loud without thinking, John. And if you told eight-year-old Rob, as he marveled over the idea of the Horizons butler, that decades later I'd have my own robot butler, he wouldn't believe you. 
I think what I love most about the Disney parks, though, is that my specific sci-fi memories are just one of the thousands upon thousands of different ways people enjoy Walt Disney World. For everyone like me who grew up obsessing over the futurism, there are just as many people who love it for the historical rides, or the fantastical rides, or even this ride. There are people who unironically loved this ride, and while I am not one of them, I love that they are. To have a place that offers so much variety and can mean so many different things to so many different people and is welcoming to all of those people, well, it's nothing short of magical. We hope you're enjoying the video so far. Yeah, Rob, 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 we need more Rob Plays videos in our lives. He's so good. I am the person. I am the people that likes the primeval world. That's me. Yeah. I'm so sad. I know that is you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are we going to do, do we got to talk about raffle stuff? Yeah, the raffle's going on now uh, throughout this whole weekend. And to be entered into the raffle, remember, you just have to make a donation for $10 or more through our special fundraiser link, which can be found at orlandoparkstop.com slash charity. If you're chosen, you receive an email with a code and you can use that code to redeem your item from our special raffle prize website we have lots of prizes uh, available from members of the community like artists uh, but also collectibles and plenty of theme park souvenirs that are new in package uh, so anyone can win raffle winners will be randomly selected all weekend today and tomorrow but we also have limited edition art prints for sale these incredible pieces of art are for members of the theme park community and all of the proceeds of these sales will help benefit the trevor project yeah, there are limited art prints. Once they're gone, they're gone. But if you're watching this a few days later, you can still check the site to see if there's anything left. That would be orlandoparkstop.com slash charity. We're also holding auctions starting today and running until we are sold out of all of the different items that have been donated. Again, with all proceeds benefiting the Trevor Project. We got classic theme park items from decades ago, like probably like right around the time I was born, and collectibles, <laughs> opening day park maps, and more. And what else, what else do we have? Signed Blu-rays from the final Bill and Ted show at Halloween Horror Nights. Ooh, I think I need to get yay. one of those. <laughs> Keep checking the site all week as we get new items for the auctions up. Uh, we just got some more donated recently. Yay. More videos. Back to videos. We do more videos now. Yes. Let's get back to what some more doing? of your videos. My videos. I didn't do oh. any videos. Oh, my God. Hey, I'm Chris from On an Unrelated Note. I have a lot of reasons that I love theme parks, but the two that are most important to me. First, I used to be around 340 pounds and... I decided that I wanted to be able to ride coasters and rides again that I couldn't exactly ride at that weight. So I lost around 100 pounds. And not only did that give me the ability to ride like I wanted to, but on top of that, it made me feel better. Just in my general daily life, it made me feel better about myself. I slept better. So theme parks actually helped change my health, which is amazing. And on top of that, it might sound cliche, but I love the sense of community in the theme parks. I've made so many friends in this community that I've never even met in real life, but I interact with them on a daily basis, which is awesome. Like, they're people that I love. And on top of that, for events like this, this community really rallies and shows their support and for events like this. And I'm so happy to see everyone supporting this uh, Trevor Project charity. So keep being awesome, everyone. Hello, everybody. My name is Brett. I'm a podcaster and a theme park fanatic. Theme parks have the biggest impact on me using one word, immersion. Environmental storytelling really is an underrated art form. My favorite thing is to take friends who have never been to a theme park before and then put them on a ride having no idea what to expect and then seeing their reaction afterwards. Tokyo Disney Sea! Uh -oh. Woo! oh no! The fun, the immersion, and the kind people are genuinely what make theme parks so special for me. Like many of you watching this, I grew up going to the theme parks. The first time I ever visited one was when I was two years old, and we visited Epcot for the Millennium Celebration. I remember the giant magic wand on Spaceship Earth, and I remember being extremely scared of the performers in the parade that was going on at that time. I don't know why, but they just, they frightened me. I, and every year afterwards, my family would probably take a trip down to Walt Disney World every year, every two years, and I would just enjoy being somewhere that I had grown up watching on the screen. Every time I saw 
the facade to Rafiki's Planet Watch. I thought that was actually Rafiki. Every time I was in the line, the queue for Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin, that wasn't an animatronic. That was Buzz Lightyear. And as I grew older, my curiosity and my interest in theme parks only grew. I wanted to know how they made Buzz look so real, why Rafiki's Planet Watch was where it was, how it operated. And so I started Offhand Disney, my YouTube channel. My love for theme parks, I think, goes all the way back to that first trip to Epcot I took when I was two years old that I still vividly remember to this day. I remember just being in awe of how people can be so happy and be together in all of these different countries around the world and seeing what the future meant in Future World. It helped sort of... it gives me hope. Epcot gave me and gives me hope that maybe it's not all bad. Maybe there is still some good things to look forward to doing and seeing in the world. And I think the transformation for Epcot, I mean, that's gonna be good too. Disneyland and Walt Disney World, though they may stumble at times, at their core, they are magic, they're idealistic, and they just help us sort of live in this really nice, perfect world for just a little bit before we have to return to the outside world. And that's why I think I love going to the Disney parks. What's up, y'all? It's Brian from Living the Magic. Like To me, theme parks represent some of the most influential and happiest times and moments of my entire life. From my oldest memories of sharing ice cream with my abuelos waiting on a bench while my parents took my older brother on the roller coaster I was too young and or chicken to get on. In high school and into my college years, feeling kind of ostracized and being the weird kid for being into theme parks felt alone. I felt a bit depressed and disconnected from who I was. And then later on in life, finding a community of creators and fans and people that enjoy it as much as I do and are as passionate about that kind of stuff as I am really made me feel like I had a community that I was a part of for the first time pretty much ever in my life. And then lastly, the most impactful moment of my life we got engaged in a theme park. We honeymooned at the theme parks uh, and finally getting to take my now wife to her first trip to Disney, to some of our first trips to Orlando. It's where we got engaged, it's where we fell in love and I realized that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. She's my partner, she loves this stuff as much as I do. It really does kind of get wrapped up in all your feelings and emotions and some of the happiest times of my life. That community that comes from this is something that I wish everyone could find in the things that they love. Oh, also, and a place to eat churros and Dole Whip and that kind of stuff at like nine o'clock in the morning and not be socially judged because that is appropriate all the time, right? Theme parks are so much more than just rides and shows. They are entire little universes where you can go with your loved ones to leave the outside world behind. They hold memories and feelings that might only be seconds long, but can last you a lifetime. Epcot was the first theme park I fell in love with. Growing up, I thought it was boring, but at some point it clicked. I was born in 1995, so I missed a lot of the original park, but I could still see it. A theme park that embraced technology and culture to show off a unique brand of humanism. By looking towards the future and reaching out to understand each other better, we can create a better world. This was the first time that I was really inspired by a theme park, and though I later saw the more complicated side of Epcot, I took the original inspiration with me everywhere. I saw a lot of things at Epcot that I didn't think were possible, and though there were many displays of futuristic technology, the one that struck me the most was living with the land, the ride about sustainable agriculture. Robots and computers are cool, but I think seeing people use technology to live with the land was so beautiful. Shortly after riding Living with the Land for the first time, I would experience one of my earliest memories of what I now understand as gender dysphoria. And as I grew older and started to reckon with it, I was filled with doubt. Was it even possible to change my body? Just make believe You're a tiny little seed A tiny little seed that's reaching up to meet your of faith and the right amount of birth. You grow to see the sunshine on your day of birth. This
This is Listen to the Land, the retired theme song from the ride before it became Living with the Land. And when I take my estrogen and my testosterone blockers each morning, I have it stuck in my head. I think about the upside down plants and the ones growing without soil. These things that we might think are impossible, but actually can go hand in hand with nature. And I think about getting sober and the years I wasted sabotaging my body in an effort to ignore the discomfort I was feeling. But now I know that anything is possible. And with each day, I feel more like myself. And what a beautiful thing that is. Let's listen to the land we all love. Nature's plan will shine above. Listen to the land. Listen to the land. Let's listen to the land we all love. Nature's plan will shine above. Listen to the land. Listen to the land. Remember that all proceeds from our event are going directly to The Trevor Project, the world's largest crisis intervention organization for LGBTQ youth. The Trevor Project works to save young lives by providing free and confidential support through a 24-7 phone lifeline, online chat, text, and other platforms, and they've done this for over 20 years. This life-saving and life-affirming work is possible because of donations and contributions like ours. We're raising money today and all throughout June to make sure that every LGBTQ young person knows that they're not alone. The world can be a scary place, but if we work to spread love instead of hate, we can make it a safer place. Whether you can donate or not, thank you for caring. If you haven't realized by now, we obviously love the theme parks and we wanted to share a little bit about where that love comes from. We both visited Universal for the first time as kids on family vacation and we immediately fell in love. Once we found each other, we realized that we had this shared love of the parks and it really became a special place for the both of us. A few years into our relationship, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor and we really didn't know what the future was gonna look like at that point. This was a very emotional time for the both of us and something that we desperately needed was a place to escape to between the endless doctor's visits. Oddly enough, that place for us was the theme parks. When you're a kid, everything in your life seems magical and the theme parks are obviously no exception. And then going back as an adult and visiting those theme parks, it just takes you back to like that simpler and happier time of your lives. Some of our greatest and most fond memories that we've ever created were created during what was supposed to be some of the darkest days of our lives, and that's all thanks to the theme parks. So when people ask us why we love Universal and why the theme parks hold such a special place in our hearts, it's because they're more than just rides and shows and $12 hot dogs. <laughs> Although there's a lot of $12 hot dogs, they're a place that anyone can go to escape what they're dealing with. They're a place that's filled with laughter and memories and smiles and happiness. And I guess this is all to say that you never really know what life is going to do with you next. You, you never know what it's gonna throw at you. But the one thing that you can be sure of is that the theme parks will be there when you need a place to escape it all. Hi there. I'm Dom. And I'm Luke. And we are Review Time. Time. We've created a YouTube channel dedicated to peeling back the curtain on theme parks. We do this so that we can share our passion and excitement for this incredible industry. But some may ask, why theme parks? As adults, we're frowned upon for playing. We're told that it goes against the maturity that's expected for our age, but Walt Disney once said that adults are only kids grown up anyway. 
Theme parks provide us an opportunity to immerse ourselves back into a world of play, one we might not have experienced for decades. No matter how old we become and how mature we may appear to be, there is still always a part of us that just wants to embrace that childlike energy, to experience good stories, to laugh, and to just have fun. Walking through those theme park gates allows you to leave the pressure and stress of the outside world behind, replacing it with a sense of awe and wonder. Theme parks allow us to experience stories in an entirely new way. They provide inspiration in their creativity of tackling challenges that we probably never knew existed. They allow us to blend in with a crowd that lets us be a little bit different, perhaps opens new doors into becoming more fulfilled with who we are. They make us remember what it's like to play. They make us smile. And I think that's important. Now, more than ever. Theme parks were built as a place to escape, a place to dream impossible dreams, make lifelong memories with friends and family, and maybe even participate in some homosexual fast dancing. How do you dance with wax legs? Stiffly. The Trevor Project is a worthy cause that Defunct Land has proudly supported with novelty-themed merchandise, the backbone of any free market theme park industry. Merchandise pumps your brain full of joy and gives you something to take home and cumbersomely store on an Ikea shelf far too high for you to regularly dust, for you to show your friends and family as you tell them about how Pop Century is the best resort because of the pools. Merchandise calms our children, holds our popcorn, and warms our hearts. The nominees for Best Theme Park Merchandise 2022 are Spider-Man Web Slingers Web Shooter Web Tech Attachment Wrist Flick DLC Festival of the Arts Grilled Cheese Stand Figment Premium Souvenir Popcorn Bucket with Rainbow Popcorn Electric Main Street Parade Ninth Revival Elton John Turtle Ridged Glow Sipper 50th Anniversary Magic Band Plus, recalled for accidentally being sold at World of Disney before launch. Universal Studios Bare Minimum Say Nothing Do Nothing Pride Collection by Comcast. And the winner is... Oh, this is very exciting. The winner is... No one. Because this is not an award show, this is just a fundraiser. Unfortunately, the fundraiser couldn't be here tonight, so we will accept this award on their behalf. And next, please give a big round of applause to the dueling banjos from a pre-COVID hoopty doo
stand up for Tosca Tommy. Nice work. All right, friends. What are we doing? We are we are going to talk about what we love about theme parks and how the theme parks have affected our lives in positive ways. What's a theme park? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I'll start. I, I've I've always been obsessed with how theme parks change over years, uh, and that's how I got into all this. Is that I was uh, like New Tomorrowland was one of the first times I ever noticed. But like, what the timekeeper? This used to be Circle Vision last time I was here, and like, I just thought it was fascinating how the room stayed the same shape, but like they added a robot. You uh, are so old. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but like, I started writing about it later uh, on blogs and stuff, and then I noticed other people kind of like to see how things change and what what new stuff is on the horizon. So, um, I wasn't expecting to make so many friends, and I think that's really what. Like the theme parks used to be like my little escape and I would go and walk around, take pictures by myself. But now I find myself going to the theme parks with people that I met through my love of theme parks. And I keep meeting new people uh, on social media or um, in the parks even. Uh, and now like people like yourself, me and you have been talking on the podcast <laughs> for years. And now we go yeah. to the theme parks together and like get Aww. to experience things together. So, and you make you me know, wear a microphone and walk around. It's super and yes, awesome. Sometimes I put you in camera. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I hate it too. Um, but yeah, no, I, I like just the other day I was at Cosmic Rewind and I got to meet so many people in person that I've talked to online for so long or the Tribute Store just opened and I met a ton of awesome people that you know I've talked to briefly on Twitter and like I'd like to hang out with them more so the theme parks have brought us all together oh, originally theme parks were like my escape of my family um, it was kind of like I, I have not to get too deep into the subject but I have some medical issues and I had a rough childhood because of those medical issues and my parents would treat me and take me to Walt Disney World and other things you know so my love of parks started with that, and then it grew into nostalgia as more and more people would go with me, like in my family, my my aunts and uncles and my cousins would go and all that. And then as I grew up, I started reading all the blogs, and then I got super interested in like all the behind the scenes stuff. Like I, I finally wanted to know how things worked, and uh, I just kept digging, and it's led me to so many things. Like uh, Alicia asking me on this podcast just for me telling a story and hearing me once, and for whatever reason keeping me around. And like, I don't know, the, th the theme parks are just so much for me. I think the planning, the designing, all that stuff is super fascinating for me. I, I'm a pretty artistic person. So everything down to the music and the audio and everything else. But uh, yeah, it's led me to people like Alicia, which has exposed me to even more people. And then, you know, because of that, I got to meet someone like Dave Cobb and just everybody else that we run into. Just ridiculous things have happened. And it's just such a huge part of my life now. And it is truly a place where... I feel happiest, like walking around with friends and like doing the tour guide thing because I know enough and, you know, I, I love all that. I love everything that has to, they, well, everything that they encompass is kind of what it is for me. You're right, though. It's like such an art form because it's not just the visual, but the audio and the, the like the, all the different elements come together so that you're fully immersed and it's like you yeah. really appreciate it and we as a community we know we're all the nerds we all appreciate it so we find <laughs> each other the nerds. <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's the things that most people walk through a park and don't realize but they they don't realize that that stuff would make it feel lesser if it was missing you know what i mean like the mm -hmm. tiny minute details that we all go nerdy for and go looking for and, and it's been such a huge just a rainbow of people and characters and personalities and stuff. It's awesome. Yeah, we are really lucky. I think uh, that we have this community. Yeah. So my love of the Disney parks has forever changed my life for the better. But I just want to very quickly explain exactly how and why up next. Hi there everyone, I'm Jack from DS1 Newscast and before I explain exactly how much of an impact that Disney's had on my life, I want to go all the way back to the beginning of my connection to Disney. And for me, that started in 1992 with the newly opened Euro Disneyland, as that was the very first Disney park that my family ever visited. 
And though I was just a baby at the time, it made a huge impact on my family, as they loved everything about the Disney Park experience. So much so, that it led us to go into Walt Disney World in 1995 for the very first time, and then again in 1996, and again in 1998, and then in 2005. And it was around that time in 05 or 06 that I stumbled across a documentary called Modern Marvels on the Discovery or History Channel, and it was all about the making of Walt Disney. Disney World and how exactly it operates. And it was from that moment onwards that my love of the Disney parks had gone from just enjoying them to now becoming fascinated with the imagineering process behind making them a reality. And over the next decade, as I finished up school and went on to university, all whilst continuing to go to Disney every year or so, I now looked at it through a different lens altogether. One of watching the parks evolve and trying to work out what the next big innovation was going to be. Which then, fast forward a few years, it brings me directly to DS My Newscast that launched in 2017. And it's obvious that DS My Newscast has changed my life forever, as it's afforded me this amazing opportunity of being able to have this dream job of talking about something that I love for a living, and being able to share this interest of the Disney news by explaining it to thousands of like-minded Disney fans around the world. But easily the most significant way that the Disney parks have changed my life forever is that if it wasn't for DSMI Newscast, I would have never met my wife. Sierra, as Disney has now transcended the amazingly fun place that we made memories as a family when I was younger, to now holding an incredibly special place in my heart, where we went on our first dates and had amazing experiences, to even where I proposed on a Disney cruise and where we celebrated on our wedding day. And so what started out as a passionate hobby has now truly transformed both my professional and personal life, and that is why I love the Disney parks. Hi, my name is Sky, and I am a trans autistic content creator. Normally on my channel, I talk about really weird stuff, but I'm talking about theme parks right now because theme parks to me are my favorite thing in the world. When I'm there, it's like the good kind of overstimulation. I just wanted to talk about how much I love theme parks. I live, breathe, sleep, eat theme parks. Everywhere I go, I am constantly comparing the experiences I have to the experiences I get at theme parks. It's to the point where my friends find me really annoying. So. I wish everyone luck. What's up guys, it's Dustin from Theme Park Shark checking in from the Park Stop Stop Hate fundraiser. Um, why do I love theme parks? Man, that's such a, uh, I don't wanna say loaded question, but it's just it's such a tough question because I mean, it's meant so much to me and I know it's meant so much to you. Um, I think it represents a lot of what's good in the world, a lot of what we enjoy, it brings people together. Um, it's a place where you go there, you can forget about absolutely everything happening, not only in your own life, but in the world in general. Um, it's fostered so many friendships. Like there's so many people I have met and have built real friendships with just because of the parks from someone like Alicia, uh, to my partner on the YouTube channel, Jake. Um, the list is endless. The list is long. Of people that I've met and actually become friends with just because of a common interest of the parks being able to go together being able to ride rides together um it's incredible it's a community building thing it's magical I mean <laughs> I know we've uh heard that term thrown around a lot but in many ways I feel that it's true um and I know that a lot of you guys feel the same way if you're here watching and um I think it's special I think it's incredible but enough about me uh, let's get back to the fundraiser. Hope you guys have a wonderful day today, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Hello, everybody. Thank you for supporting and helping us raise money for the Trevor Project. It's a wonderful foundation for an equally wonderful cause. You may recognize the sound of my voice from some of the various How It Worked videos over the years, but today I want to talk about something a little bit different. We've all found ourselves here together through our mutual love of theme parks, the places we've come to appreciate, love, and cherish. They've brought us together to share the fun with friends, family, significant others, and beyond. And it's through this bond that connects us to different parks, different countries, cultures, communities, and people all around the world, and of course, here at home. Visiting parks is about adventure, fun, and seeing new worlds filled with differences that ultimately unite us. They, in a way, teach us to better ourselves by letting us express ourselves unapologetically, bringing us closer 
to being loving and accepting of everybody, no matter who they are or who they love. Through this community that has brought us together, I'm confident that we're able to spread farther than we already are to meet the world with the same kindness, compassion, love, and acceptance of everyone that we've seen prosper in this community. We're happy to be joining this cause, and please stick around for a very special ride model opportunity from us here at Amusement Labs to you. Thank you for being here. Stay curious, and I'll see you in the parks. Hello, everyone. Dr. Strangoy here. For those who don't know, I create YouTube videos almost exclusively about Halloween Horror Nights. When Alicia Stella of Orlando Park Stop posted a call out for creators to have a brief video on park positivity to help raise funds for the Trevor Project, I knew I wanted to support it in any way I could. So let's discuss my version of park positivity right now. What does HHN mean to me? It means love, family, and passion. HHN means love. This is some of the best quality time I spend with my wife, my daughter, and my best friend. HHN means family. The HHN community is one of the most passionate and supportive fandoms I have ever seen. The vast majority of HHN fans, fan sites, podcasts, and YouTube channels are there to support each other and more impressively, positively support and contribute to society as a whole. A perfect example of this is this Park Stop Stop the Hate fundraiser you are watching right now. This project by Alicia Stella and Orlando Park Stop is just one example of many where the HHN community has given back for worthy causes. HHN means passion. We eagerly await this event year after year. From the anticipation, rumors, and buildup, to announcement season, to the two months attending, we are left in awe year after year of how Universal can continue to outshine and astonish. To the fans, HHN is Halloween. Hi, I'm Travis Kirkland. I'm the host of the podcast Theme Park the Movie. And, you know, for me, theme parks are a really unique medium. Uh, most media provide varying levels of escapism, but unlike movies or books, true spatial immersion, you know, that's what makes theme parks so distinct. They can be created by people who want to express a fantastical, even idealistic environment that anyone can enjoy. Uh, in a way, it's one of the most direct relationships an artist can have with their audience through their art. And what makes these places so special to audiences is that it can be a communal experience that casts no judgment on their character. Uh, the fantasy world only cares about our pleasure and our happiness. So if we are able to create and exist within these fantastical worlds where everyone, no matter who you are, can thrive and live as our authentic selves, I'd like to think it's also possible in the real world. Hello, I'm Kenneth from Parallel Disney and I love theme parks. This affection or dare I say obsession, goes way beyond what your typical average Joe gets from a theme park. A major factor of theme park enjoyment of course comes from the fantasy. The ability to go someplace you've never gone before, or a place that doesn't exist. This saddled with the ride experiences really is the bread and butter of why theme parks work as a whole. But this is merely just the beginning. The main thing that brings my theme park obsession to the next level is the technology. The first time I go on a ride, I enjoy it for its face value. The parts that the Imagineers intend for you to experience and enjoy. Shortly after the ride or through the second ride through, I like to look at all the behind the scenes elements and ponder them. How do the ride vehicles work? How was that special effect achieved? How much money did all this cost? Who thought of this? 
At this point, I was just your average theme park nut. But soon, like many a tale, Pandora's box was opened. I have discovered the theme park community on YouTube, and my life would probably never be the same. Seeing and hearing what all these wonderful people had to say was something special, and I, I thought I could be a part of that too. I was inspired to become a theme park YouTuber myself, and now here I am pointing out some of the fun differences between similar attractions between the various parks. And even though I have just a small, fairly insignificant channel, it has generated even more magic and passion for theme parks. And better yet, I've even gotten to meet and collaborate with some other people in the community. Hopefully my channel and love of theme parks only grows from here. And with that, more opportunities and friends to meet. Hey guys, my name's Daniel, aka Black and Blue 572. What I personally love about theme parks is immersion. I love to feel like I'm in a completely different world than the world we're in now. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people in the theme park fandom, the theme park community really connects to because, you know, our world isn't perfect, so why not travel to another one that might be a little bit more perfect? A way that theme parks have affected me a way that theme parks have affected me positively was just keeping my brain entertained while going through long periods of depression and anxiety. It's something that definitely comforted me during those really dark times. Enjoying things that people like Alicia does. But yeah, I just figured I'd hop onto this because I love theme parks, I love the LGBT plus community, and what better way to show your support and love than this project. Thank you guys. Uh, pretty much the reason why I love going to theme parks is because uh, I like to go in to have a, a fun time, hang out with friends and family, uh, whether it be just to go into a couple of rides, going out for dinner and whatnot. It's pretty much a real life version of that false image of the of mall life that a lot of 80s and 90s shows were often showcasing. Hey guys, it's Jack from Annual Pass, and I gotta say, I love theme parks because I've got to experience them from being a child to being an adult in a totally different way, and the, 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 Theme parks are modern art is what it comes down to. The artistry and the engineering behind it and the experiences you have. Like, I will never forget the smell of the forest at E.T. or the taste of my first Casey's Corner hot dog. And it's it's something that I carry with me forever. And I, I, I get this magical experience, this, this feeling inside of me every time I step into a theme park. And uh, it's something that you just can't replicate anywhere else. And theme parks are incredible. And I'm so lucky to experience them now on this level that I do. But, uh, yeah, so... Good job, theme parks. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Matt, and welcome to my little humble abode in the internet here at Theme Park Bar. For those of you who don't know me, I am an Orlando native. I'm a career bartender. My favorite thing to do, just like a lot of y'all at the theme parks, is enjoy a nice, tasty adult beverage. And I like showing you how to recreate those drinks at home when you can't make it to our favorite places, the theme parks. Talking about a theme park being a favorite place, positivity in the parks, that's the theme of tonight. When I think of theme parks, positivity, just good times all around is all I can think of. I grew up in the theme parks, much like many Orlando natives. My first memories were in a theme park. Some of my oldest and dearest friendships are made in theme parks. I don't talk to anyone from high school, but four of the last five weddings I've been to have been people I've met specifically in the theme parks. I had my first kiss in a theme park. I had my first major heartbreak in a theme park. Had my first job in a theme park. I got engaged in a theme park. Heck, you know, uh, a little spoiler alert to my parents here. I'm getting married in a theme park. When I think of the theme parks, nothing but positivity surrounds them. My most important moments in life centered around the parks. It doesn't matter where it was, whether it was Disney, SeaWorld, or Universal, the friendships, the relationships, the bond, and the core life memories I've made in parks are just that. They're, they're the most important and nearest and dearest things to my heart. So I wanna propose a toast to theme parks, to fans of theme parks, to the friends we've made in all of the theme parks. Like I said, whether you're a Disney fan, a Universal fan, or a SeaWorld fan, here's a drink for each and every one of you. 
Mm. 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 And hey, you know, there are a lot of parks out there. You might not be in the Florida area. That's fine. Hey, those of you up in the Carolinas, hey, Carowinds, here's to you. Oh, mm. Hey, let's say you're up north, you know, the parks down south, they're hard to get to sometimes. Cedar, Cedar Point, Cedar Fair. Hey, here's to you guys as well. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Hey, let's say you're not in the United States. Let's say you're at Alton Towers. Hey, here is a drink to Alton Towers as well. Matt, no. What? No. What? You know how many theme parks there are in the world? It's fine. No, it's, it's not. It's fine. I don't know about you guys, but I am feeling good. I am feeling great. So I feel like I am uh, living my best life in one of my favorite theme parks. Whether you're here, whether you're there, no matter where you are, we all have a calming bound here of loving the attractions, of loving the parks. So whether you're Disney, you're Universal, you're out on towers. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the theme parks. I hope you're having a wonderful night. And if you have the opportunity to, please donate to the Trevor Project. We're doing a lot of great stuff here. Hey, if you want to follow along with me and see more of my shenanigans, just look up Theme Park Bar anywhere on the internet, YouTube, Twitter, or Instagram. And a very special thank you to Alicia Stell for inviting me to join in the fun festivities this weekend. Remember when you're going out to a theme park or your local bars, please make sure you're always being safe, you drink responsibly, and you never forget to tip your bartenders. Thank you again for tuning in, and I hope you all have a wonderful night. Oh my god, I forgot about Bush Gardens. Matt, no! That's going to do it for our presentation, but be sure to check out orlandoparkstop.com slash charity to make a donation, purchase art, or check out the ongoing auctions. And a big thank you to everyone that submitted a video for this presentation. See the links in the description to everyone's channels and be sure to subscribe. We'll be giving out raffle prizes all weekend, June 4th and 5th, but donations will remain open for all of June. And we'll be keeping the art sales running until we've completely sold out, and we'll keep posting auctions until we've run out of memorabilia. So, even if you're watching this after it has originally been posted, you should still check out the site. And whether you donate or not, thank you for caring, thank you for your support, we appreciate everybody for checking in. And thank you all for spreading love and not hate. Bye. Well, I think the music will just like swell up. And then... <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Is that what the music's gonna sound like? Apparently, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we could do that together. <laughs> 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 <laughs>